Consumers, you can really be overwhelmed by choices these days. Making sure you get the best bang for your buck means even more right now with inflation at record high levels. We are still a ways away from seeing overall inflation rates come down to a level that most people would feel like is comfortable. Things like buying a car. Until then, you're gonna to wanna to get as much information in writing from the dealer as possible. Keeping your information safe online, it takes more steps these days. And that's a good idea to protect your privacy. For the next 30 minutes, we're looking at Consumer Reports' top advice for things like buying that new car, saving money, and avoiding medical debt. The healthcare system can be confusing and expensive, even for those with insurance. Think about when it comes to tests, treatments, or medicines your doctor may order. Every once in a while, you'll get a message back from your insurance, denied. It's not covered by your policy. So do you go without pay out of your pocket? There is another option. Appeal the decision so it is covered. Consumer Reports has a step-by-step -step process to help you appeal the decision whether you have Medicare or private health insurance. Step one, call your insurance company to make sure there wasn't an error with your claim. Mistakes can and do happen. Step two, ask to speak to the reviewer behind the decision and request an explanation. You'll need this information for your next step, filing a formal appeal, specifically stating that you disagree with the decision. Ask your doctor to write a letter to explain why the procedure is necessary and to include any documentation to help support that, like your medical records and treatment studies and any communication with the insurance company. Ask your doctor to write a letter. Doctors are used to this, so don't be afraid to ask them. The next step might be the hardest, waiting. It could take 30 days or longer for an answer, but if you need, if you need the denied treatment right away, make sure you request an ex expedited review. You're not the only person in this situation. According to a report from Kaiser Family Foundation, about 18% of in-network claims from people insured through an Affordable Care Act plan were denied in 2020. So if you get a letter that the insurer is still denying the claim, know that both Medicare and private insurance companies are required by law to provide the reason in writing, as well as explain how to appeal the decision with an independent third party. If you get your insurance through your employer, consider asking your company's human resources department to help. Over 40 million people have a money-related issue in common. Unpaid medical bills sent to collections. And get this, almost half of those bills contain at least one error. When you get a bill from a collection agency or a call from a collection agent, you need to hit the pause button. Don't automatically assume you owe the money. Don't get upset about a new debt. Instead, take these recommendations from Consumer Reports. Gather as much info as you can, including the name of the collection agency, the person you're speaking with, their phone number, address, email, and as much information about the bill as possible. Next, ask the debt collector to send verification of the debt. You can expect to receive information on the debt in the mail within about five days after your request. If the verification letter shows an error, File a dispute in writing by either email or certified letter within 30 days or else the collection agency will assume the debt is valid. I told my son this whole story and he said, all of this for $71? And I said, yes, but you can imagine if it was thousands of dollars. Medical debt, no matter big or small, needs to be correct. So take the time to make sure you're really on the hook for what they say you are. A big part of not ending up in the ER and with any kind of medical bill is avoiding injuries. Last year, there were 137,000 ER visits associated with ladders. You probably don't use a ladder every week or month, so take a look at it. Check for loose parts before you start climbing. Set your ladder on level ground with the base 12 inches away from the wall for every four feet that the ladder reaches. The ladder should also extend three feet past your roof or workspace. While we're on the safety subject, lawn mowers accounted for an estimated 70,000 injuries last year. Now, part of the reason, rocks, sticks, or toys that turn into projectiles. And then, then there are issues with riding lawn mowers. Be careful when using a riding mower over uneven terrain. Many people are killed by the mower tipping over onto the driver. 
So unlike hand mowers, riding mowers should always move up and down slopes, not across, and never allow a child to ride with you. Another big expense is a car. At some point, you'll end up on the car lot looking for a new car or maybe wanting to trade one in. It's an experience many people find stressful and you're not alone. The FTC received more than 100,000 complaints each year over the last three years. So this is not new and it's not going away either. It was all about shady dealership practices. The FTC is trying to put into place some protections and guidelines for the dealers in the hopes of protecting consumers. Now, one of the practices the FTC wants to ban, not disclosing the full price of a car to any consumer who asks. Until then, you're going to want to get as much information in writing from the dealer as possible. Ask for an itemized out the door price. Included in that itemized list, add-ons. These are extras that have already been installed on that car. And then the dealer tells you, well, that car is the only one in stock. Under the new rules, you would not have to pay more in order to purchase the vehicle. But until then, you need to negotiate with the dealer and try and get those extras taken off. According to Consumer Reports, half a dealer's profit on a new car, about $1,200, is from things like extra financing, leasing, and service fees. On a used car, they make about a third of the profit from those fees, around $900. One last thing, if you find a car you like, settle on it with the dealer, but when we go to pick it up, the car, the dealer says there's been a mistake. The car just got sold and the only one left is more expensive. Walk away. It's an unfair business practice. It used to be the rule of thumb for first cars to be a beater. Teens ended up behind the wheel in something you didn't mind if it got a fender bender. But that's not what the experts today say. We're trying to promote the idea that uh, cars for teens should have uh, features to help them avoid being in crashes. A big part of the reason why teen drivers are more at risk of crashing is, is their inexperience. The numbers tell the story. Teens are three times more likely to be involved in a fatal accident compared to older drivers. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety teamed up with Consumer Reports to create a list of safe vehicles for teen drivers. There are 70 used and new cars ranging in price from $6,000 to $39,000. All the cars performed well during crash tests, have high reliability scores, and can break from 60 miles per hour to zero in 145 feet or less. They also have electronic stability control, which can prevent an accident. We always say buy as much safety as you can afford. And automatic emergency braking is a wonderful backup for a new driver that's building that experience of, of braking distances. You can find the list of best cars for teens in the Two Wants to Know section of WFMYNews2.com. Another option when buying a car are hybrid models. Are they worth the extra cost in the long run? Consumer Reports crunched the numbers. We compared hybrid and non-hybrid versions of some popular vehicles and found that fuel savings could outweigh the upfront purchase price of some hybrid models. Consumer Reports did the math. They used a gas price of $4 a gallon, driving 12,000 miles a year. The Toyota RAV4 Hybrid will pay off its higher cost in four years the Honda Accord Hybrid in three years, and the Hyundai Santa Fe Hybrid in only two. And get this, not that we want this to happen, but if gas prices go up to $5 per gallon, the payback period for the Santa Fe Hybrid could drop to just one year. Beyond fuel economy, some hybrids perform better in our tests than the gas-only versions of the same model. For example, the Hyundai Santa Fe Hybrid rides better, quieter, and shifts smoother than the gas-only Santa Fe. And it's quicker in our acceleration test, too. Still ahead, inflation is still hurting everyone's wallets. How to save money on your next road trip, flight or water bill. Plus, whether it's TikTok, YouTube, or just your email, we all spend a lot of time using apps or websites. We'll tell you how to keep your kids and your personal information safe. Saving money is more important than ever right now. With inflation driving up prices of just about everything, going on vacation is always a big expense. So saving money when you're traveling is key. Consumer Reports looked into ways to make trips as cost-saving as possible. First, don't leave gas stops to chance. 
This is when Gas Buddy, Gas Guru, and Waze really come in handy. Plan your gas stops by price along the way. And you may want to rethink how you pay for gas. While many gas stations will offer you a lower price if you pay in cash, a credit card with cashback rewards may actually be a better deal, especially if you're paying more for gas than you normally would in a month. So what about when you're booking your flight? Oftentimes, it's not the price of the flight, but the extra fees making the final ticket price expensive. These days, many airlines make more money off of fees than they do over base airfares. For every trip, you need to decide what extras, if any, you're willing to pay for. If having a free carry-on or checked bag is a big deal to you, consider using one airline all the time and get that airline's credit card. Most often, the perks include free checked bags as well as a priority seat selection and even boarding. My airfare search always starts with Google Flights. While it gives me a list of all the airlines, it also gives me what the price point usually is for each trip. And Consumer Reports says if you see a price you can live with my advice is to book it well how do you know do your laundry may not seem like an obvious way to save money but the type of washer you use and the rent cycle can make a difference in your monthly water bill front load washers deliver when it comes to cleaning performance and they use the least amount of water and energy Consumer Reports says using a high efficiency washer and dryer is one of the most impactful things you can do in terms of reducing your energy bills. But no matter what kind of machines you have, you can save money by using cold water and better laundry detergent. The top two detergents in CR's tests, Tide Plus Ultra Stain Release and Persil Pro Clean Stain Fighter. Both can tackle tough stains in lower temperature water and can also be used as a pre-treat stain remover. Now, line drying, it's going to save you on using your dryer, but that's not always an option. Instead, add another spin cycle to your washer. This reduces your dryer's workload by extracting more water from the clothes, which means your dryer works less and less energy is wasted. Saving on gift shopping or just everyday shopping can depend on where you buy things. And if you can sign up for a service like Amazon Prime or Walmart Plus, let's break down each to see where you can get the best deals. Two Wants to Know found a Consumer Reports comparison. Both companies, Amazon and Walmart, are vying for your business and they're rolling out deals. Walmart Plus costs a bit less, but they both offer free shipping, deals, and discounts for members, grocery delivery, and some streaming music and video perks. Walmart doesn't have a huge array of benefits that Amazon Prime does, but it has some good key deals that can really help regular Walmart shoppers. Here's where Walmart shines, at the pump. You can save up to 10 cents a gallon at Exxon, Mobile, Walmart, and Murphy stations. Plus, you can get member gas prices at Sam's Club. When it comes to streaming, both offer added perks. A Walmart Plus membership gets you a free subscription to Paramount Plus and six months free of Spotify Premium, while Amazon Prime is going to give you Prime Video, Prime Music, and Prime Gaming. Additionally, Prime members get unlimited online photo storage, five gigs of video storage, and like they're thrown in the kitchen sink, recently Amazon Prime members are receiving access to a free year of Grubhub Plus, which includes unlimited deliveries from participating restaurants with no delivery fee. If you're still not sure, you can try a 30-day free trial on each service, so test it out for yourself and then decide. That was a gorgeous day today. We topped out at 63 degrees. Presently, we're at 57 right here in the Triad. Up in the mountain and foothill communities, there's some upper 40s, actually a little chilly. Uh, we'll push it up to the 60s, though, for the coastal sections. Not too bad. Heading into the night tonight, we're going with 44 for the overnight low. Look for clouds to go on the increase. I think some overnight rain, even into tomorrow morning, so maybe even as early as 3 a.m. But we'll see that rain taper off by midday, a high of 58, and then clearing skies heading into the evening on Friday and probably the afternoon, to be honest. Saturday looks good, too, but Sunday is going to be a rain. Rain, rainy day, but we'll warm up to about 62 degrees for your weekend. Complete forecast coming up. Welcome back to our Consumer Report special. Next up, all things tech, computers, phones, tablets, Zoom, PowerPoint, Microsoft Teams. More than likely, you can use one of those devices or programs every day, either at work or from home. When it comes to kids, making sure they're safe online can be tricky. Consumer Reports found several free features to give parents some peace of mind. 
Let's talk free parent control features that have been upgraded. Microsoft Family Safety. It's built into Windows and it's also available as an app for Xbox, Android, and iOS. Then you have Apple's parental controls for iOS and Mac. They're located in the screen time settings. Both allow you to limit screen time and set content restrictions on your kids' devices. Then there's Google Family Link app, which is available for Android and iOS. And get this, it has a locator. With Google Family Link and the Google account you set up for your kids, you can do anything from monitor their app usage to seeing where they are on a map. The tools from Microsoft, Apple, and Google all allow you to put restrictions on the apps that your kids have access to. YouTube also allows you to set up a supervised experience for kids under 13. It will determine the types of videos your kids can watch. Media apps. TikTok is one of the most popular out there right now. Like every other app, they want to know info about you, even when you're not using the app. So you might not realize it, but TikTok has code spread all over the internet on websites and apps to collect data about things you do when you're not on TikTok. Now, there's nothing you can do to stop that entirely, but you can use a setting to control whether TikTok can use that data for targeted ads, and that's a good idea to protect your privacy. Here's another look at where that is. In settings, you're gonna choose ads at the bottom, and then when you see this screen, you toggle off the switch for ad settings. Another way to protect your information on TikTok is to make your account private. You can also make that change in the privacy settings. If you've never Googled yourself, you probably should. Sometimes information you may not be expecting can end up just a click away. A lot of people don't even realize that there's tons of information about them online. Like these companies don't tell you they're putting up your information. So how can you regain control of your information? You can start by checking out those well-known data broker sites for your personal information, like been verified. Sometimes it's as easy as opting out and getting an email confirmation. Some sites may require a copy of your license or ID to delete your data. Before sending it, cross out any excess info that might be on there, like your license number or social security number. If you'd rather let someone else do the work, Consumer Reports says sites like Delete Me, Canary, or OneRep charge around $100 a year to remove your info from a number of sites. Anyone's email notifications look a little like this? Thousands of unread messages just sitting there in your inbox. It can feel daunting to clean out, but Consumer Reports put together some tips on how to declutter your digital space. Over the course of two days, a couple hours each day, it was more than 100,000 emails I was able to delete. Yes, decluttering can take time, but don't let that deter you. Google makes digital house cleaning a little easier with its storage manager. So if you have like photos or videos or like giant PDFs or things like that, it'll, it'll highlight, but like, hey, you've got all this stuff, do you want to delete it? There's a few more tricks, no matter what email service you use. First, go to the search bar in your email and search for companies or brands you interact with a lot. You don't need all those old notifications. You have an account and all the info is stored there. This is just clutter, so delete it. Next, click inside your search bar. You can search results with attachments and delete messages taking up extra space. One last trick unsubscribe. Get rid of those newsletters or shopping ads you never open. You can always find news stories from Consumer Reports on WFMINews2.com. Just look in the Two Wants to Know section.